What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we're going to be covering Immortal X-Men issue number 6. This will be a Judgment Day tie-in. This will be the judgment of Sebastian Shaw. But I promise you, that is not the only one being judged. Now, this story is taking place before the first battle of the Progenitor and afterwards, which we saw in the most recent issue of Judgment Day. Our X-Men made their full attack against the Celestial, believing that they defeated it, seeing the aftermath, the explosion, all of the dead. It was nothing more than a Celestial illusion. All of our X-Men had been tricked, and now they are all recognizing that they are going to be judged. And I am sad to say there is no X-Men Red this week. Usually they've been releasing those on the same day. We would get a Mortal X-Men and then X-Men Red. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for the hour of Magneto until next week. Now do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we jump into this issue, we are picking up with a conversation between Destiny and Sinister. This is when Sinister let her know exactly how to destroy the progenitor. The Avengers unwilling to do so. The Eternals bound by their principles unable to do so. But mutant kind, they are much more morally flexible, which means they have no problem taking the risk of this destruction. Because this is why the Avengers won't do it. There is a risk that the Celestial could just detonate. We saw that play out. We saw the whole illusion of it. We saw Destiny and Emma Frost connect everybody's mind with what members of the Quiet Council were currently there. They all voted. They voted. They went into battle. The Celestial exploded. Innocence killed. The blast absolutely devastating. Our mutants coming out of the illusion, recognizing that their judgment is upon them. The first to be judged is Destiny, looking like her mother, because this is something the progenitor has been doing a lot. Coming in the form of something you fear, something you hate, something that would hit you with the most devastation. And while Destiny tries to reject the Celestial, saying that its judgment means nothing, she still gets the thumbs down. She does not pass. She will be part of the reason why humanity will die. What she is being judged for specifically is for lying about her gift to achieve it. Judging her for fearing of losing her. And while Destiny tries to say that there is no destiny with her every fearful action she shows otherwise now this is when we are taken to the quiet council after the first battle of the progenitor everyone pretty quiet here because they just got duped and they failed miserably and with this failure means the judgment of the entire planet and it appears that we have everybody back on the council even storm is sitting here though they do not bring up where she is been. We can only assume that she was battling on Arako and that we are going to see that later on. But they have acknowledged that they are now forced to play this Celestial's game. That they are all going to be judged. Whether it be in groups or individually, they will all be tested. Emma Frost has learned from her judgment that this could come to you in any kind of way, shape, or form. Letting the council know that she got the thumbs down. This is because she was playing both sides with her not committing to some kind of principles. She was judged poorly. We have Kate Pride. She was already judged and she passed. Not really sure why she passed, but she does make a joke that she has early nights and she eats healthy. Charles Xavier, he's not even sure if he would notice that he is getting a test or some kind of judgment because he is still fighting off a psychic siege even while they have this conversation. He does let them know that if he dies again, he would appreciate if the council did not bloody their hands at least while he is absent so he can get his say in and while all of them discuss judgment we are taken back to the early days of Sebastian Shaw this not appearing to be his judgment or his test but to see what kind of man he is you know in his early childhood days he had tried to go to his father just to talk to him to feel affection from him but instead his father turned him away and so when Shaw got older when he made his first million dollars he brought it to the grave of his father and he burned every single dollar 
He wasn't doing this because of the memory of his father. He was doing this to ensure that hell stayed lit, that those fires still burned, and his father along with it. As this meeting begins to adjourn, Storm lets us know that she needs to head back to Araco, that there are still machines up there and they are destroying a lot of stuff. We do learn that Legion had saved a bunch of people, so we're not sure if Legion died, what happened to him, how he was able to save people. We have no idea what's going on with Legion. I'm really excited for them to jump back into that because we saw the Battle of Araco and man, did they leave us on some freaking cliffhanger. She does reiterate to the council what Charles Xavier had said, that if they do decide to do that kind of vote again, they will regret not having her part of that meeting. Before everybody does go, Emma Frost lets us know that the Eternals want to set up a meeting. They want to set up some kind of pack. Not really sure what this is or how it will be done. Sebastian Shaw sees this as an opportunity because while many people on this council they may not trust him there is almost nobody better to negotiate a deal and while he has his own agenda he has his own motives it still could be very beneficial for mutant kind to further that everybody else on the council they're needed on the island but before everybody leaves we see a giant demon arrive in his hands it appears to be the black knight the one Exodus knew back in the day, Garrington begging Exodus to save his life. That if Exodus is to take his place, he can go free. And while Exodus loves him, he cares about him, the mutant church is still in the cradle. He cannot sacrifice himself for one individual, even for someone he cares about so deeply. As the choice has been made, the demon goes to take Garrington back down to hell. Exodus running in trying to stop this. Right now, the biggest concern is that Exodus is going to get trapped in hell. Now, if he dies, they can resurrect him. That's something easily done. If he gets trapped down in hell, that might be a little more complicated to go and get him. But definitely not impossible when you have people like Magic. This is when Sebastian Shaw, he takes off his jacket. He heads down into the hellfire completely unscathed. He goes and he stops Exodus. The Hellfire making Shaw stronger. We see the beast fade away. This test is over. The thumb is raised for Exodus. He has passed. This was all a test from the progenitor for Exodus to see how he would react, to see what he would do. Taking us a little bit later, Sebastian Shaw, he is having a conversation with Leland. You see, Sebastian Shaw is a businessman above everything else. And when it comes to making money, there is nothing that he won't do to include Orcus Shell accounts. One's looking for investments to produce new generation of anti-mutant weapons. Of course, he is going to invest in it. Also being someone who invested in Sentinels. If you were to ask him, does he regret doing that? The only thing he regrets is not getting in earlier to have a few more points. But of course, this was Sebastian Shaw's test. Showing up as Emma Frost, the progenitor lets Sebastian Shaw know that he has been judged and her thumb is down. Now, Sebastian Shaw, he is livid because if you're gonna come to me as somebody, why would you do it as Emma Frost? Trying to talk as much smack as he possibly can to the god, it judges him and then it leaves. Leaves him angry and furious. But even in his anger, he has other things he needs to focus on. Headed over to the Hellfire Club. This is where he sits down and he has a meeting. This meeting is with Star Fox. Letting him know that the immortal secret this is what started everything saying that they'll have to work out something to give up there he of course immediately thinks how he might be able to profit from this but then he also remembers the judgment from the celestial this actually alters what he is going to do in this situation letting Star Fox know that Krakoa isn't going to strike a deal that will leave a lot of men like himself better off Whatever happens, it is going to be for the children. And so the two of them, they discuss. Which brings us to later on in the day. A pentagram on the ground. A heart in his hand. And Sebastian Shaw, he doesn't want to die. In fact, he wants to live forever. Sipping the finest of brandies that cost entire planets. He wants power, he wants money, he wants success. He also wants to keep things moving forward. And so he does a ritual. He 
summons somebody appearing before him, we have Mother Righteous. And Sebastian Shaw is letting her know that he is interested in striking a deal. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. This one heavily focused on Sebastian Shaw, on his idea of being a businessman, how cutthroat he is, how unwavering he can be, and even at the end of the day, when everything looks like it might be falling apart, he summons Mother Righteous, a brand new character that we had seen in the pages of Legion of X. She had originally come to Legion. She had offered him the power of Ghost Rider. Now, of course, he inevitably turned this down, and we had saw Mother Righteous go to Banshee, but we haven't seen too much of her since then. Is there a possibility that Sebastian Shaw could get the power of Ghost Rider? Now, Mother Righteous, she offers a lot of other things as well. We haven't seen the full extent of what she is capable of offering people. So while she offered Legion the power of Ghost Rider, it may be something different entirely when it comes to Sebastian Shaw. And we also don't know why she offers these things. There's gotta be some kind of payoff. We just don't fully understand what that is yet. More and more through all of these little tie-ins and side comics, what we are really seeing is that while our heroes would love to pretend that the judgment doesn't affect them, that they don't care about it, on a real level, it really is affecting them because they come to the realization if society, if all of humanity, if the earth is to be wiped clean, that their down vote was part of the reason that that happened. This is something that a lot of mutants are struggling with. In fact, we are going to cover this heavily in the Marauders Judgment Day tie-in, which is our next video. I am very happy to see Storm. It's very unfortunate they don't really let us know where she was. I'm hoping that in the Hour of Magneto, we're going to find that out. I'm also really excited to find out what the heck happened to Legion. Because him and Euronos, they flew up into the sky. Euronos come back down a couple minutes later, and Legion is nowhere to be seen. But Storm is saying that that he is responsible for saving a bunch of people on Arako. I cannot wait until that is explored in a much more deeper manner. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything going on with this event, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It'll get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, we have multiple different tiers from $1 to $50. From loyalty badges to being on the channel as a guest to talk about comics. These memberships help out the channel tremendously. But if you're unable to do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.